Hello, welcome to Sigma Tech Learning Hall. I'll be your instructor for biology. For this class, we are going to be taking our exercises from the exam guide app. Now, if you don't already have this installed in your device, I would like you to download the app in order to follow along in this class. Now, exam guide is a leading educational app that helps students prepare adequately for various exams. Exams such as the UTME, the post-UTME, WIAC, GCE, IGMB, KCPE, JUPEB, Calbepedia. In the junior sections, we also have the BECE, we have the JSCE, and so much more. Now, you can download the app from www.examguide.com or you visit the Google Play Store to download. Now please subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell to update yourselves on new videos that will be coming up. Now if you're ready for this class, let's get started. Today we're going to be looking at reproduction in invertebrates. Reproduction in invertebrates. Now before we continue um, this particular topic, I want to take a little review of what we have discussed so far about reproduction. We defined reproduction as the process by which living organisms give rise to new individuals after their kind. They give rise to new individuals after their kind, or we can say of the same species. Now, we also looked at several purposes of um, reproduction, of which we talked about um, population organization, continuity of life, we talked about the existence of life, we talked about variation and so many other um, purposes of um, um, reproduction. We also discussed types of reproduction and I told you we have basically two types of reproduction. We have what we call sexual and asexual reproduction. Under sexual reproduction, we said that sexual reproduction has to do with or it involves two parent organisms and it involves the production of their gametes as well as the union of their gametes. And we said examples of organisms that carry out sexual reproduction includes higher plants and higher animals. And then also we uh, talked about asexual reproduction as the second type of reproduction in living organisms. And then we said that asexual reproduction is a type of reproduction that involves only a single parent and there is no without a production and union of gametes. So there is an absence of production of gametes. There is an absence, a total absence of gametes. And I also told you we have several types of asexual reproduction. We talked about binary fission. We also looked at um, we talked about binary fission, we talked about budding, which is also carried out by high um, yeast and even bacteria, binary fission carried out by amoeba, okay, we also talked about paramecium, we also looked at euglena carrying out um, binary fission, and uh, we also talked about um, spore formation being carried out by rhizopores, and then we also discussed vegetative reproduction, which is carried out by most plants, okay, most green plants. And then we also talked about fragmentation, which we said is also carried out by some unicellular organisms, which also includes bacteria. And then today we're going to be looking at reproduction in invertebrates, in invertebrates. Now, before we go into this discussion on reproduction in invertebrates, I'd like us to consider the subtopics that we'll be looking at in this particular lesson or in this particular class. So we're going to be looking at reproduction in earthworms. These are the major areas we're going to be taught, major um, invertebrates we're going to be looking at and their, how they carry out reproduction. We're going to look at reproduction in earthworm. We're going to look at reproduction in tapeworm. We're going to look at reproduction in um, hydra. We're also going to be talking about reproduction in snail. We are going to look at reproduction in cockroach, which is an insect. We're also going to be discussing reproduction in starfish. 
which is an echinodermata. So, what are the objectives we're going to be looking at in today's class? By the end of this lesson, you are expected or you should be able to define and mention the phylum of invertebrates in Kingdom Animalia. We're going to be looking at it again. And then also you should be able to describe reproduction in Hydra, reproduction in Tapeworm, reproduction in Earthworm, reproduction in Snail, reproduction in Cockroach, and then reproduction in Starfish. Now if you take a look at all these mentionings of reproduction in each of these invertebrates, you will understand that they are the phylum. Some of the phylum that we have in um, Kingdom Animalia are, are, are already here. We have Hydra, which serves as the colentrates. We have tapeworm as the platyhelminths or flatworm. We have earthworm as an annelid or a segmented worm. We have the snail as the mollusk. We also have the cockroach, which represents the arthropod, but of the class insecta. And then we have the starfish, which is of the phylum Echinodermata. So let's begin by looking at what is an invertebrate. Now, invertebrates, by definition, are actually um, animals without backbones, or you can say, uh, or without bones within them. Animals without bones in them. Bones in them. They don't have bones. And um, when we were looking at Kingdom Animalia, I told you we have about nine phylum. And out of those nine phylum, the first eight in terms of hierarchy and order, the first eight, they are actually, the first eight are invertebrates, while the ninth is a chordata. Okay, so let me list out the first eight. We have the porifera, we have the colentrata, we have the platyhelminths, we have the nematoda, we have the anelida, we have the mollusca, we have the arthropoda, and then we have the echinodermata. The ninth one is called chordata, and chordata, like we said, is a vertebrate. Now let's take a look at some of the examples that are found in each of these invertebrates, eight phylums of invertebrates. Now for porifera, an example of a porifera is the sponge, okay? Also, we have the colentrata. The second on the list is the colentrata. Colentrata, examples of colentrata, we have the hydra. We have hydra. We have sea anemone. These are examples of colentrata. We also have what we call the platyhelminths. Now, platyhelminths are also called flatworms. Examples of these organisms include the tapeworm, we have the planaria and so many others. They are called flat worms or platyhelminths. We also have other uh, um, um, phylum. We have the nematoda. The nematoda are also called round worms. They are called round worms. Examples, we have the ascaris lumbricoid. It is a round worm. Number five, we have the anelida. Anelida, another name for anelida, they are called segmented worms. And examples of these segmented worms include the earthworm. We also have the leech, okay? The leech, the earthworm, they fall under this category of anelida. Now, some are parasitic, while some are not, are free living. Then number six, we have what we call mollusca. Mollusca. Now, under this category, we have examples like the snail, we have the slugs, we, ha we have the um, octopus, and so on. They fall under this category. And then we also have what we call the arthropoda. Arthropoda. Now, the arthropodas, they are actually divided into four major class of interests. Now, these four classes include the crustaceans, <coughs> Examples of the crustaceans, we have the crabs, we have the shrimps, we have the prawns. They fall under crustaceans. Then we also have another class called the insecta. The insecta class includes um, the cockroach, the termites, the housefly, the butterfly, the um, 
grasshoppers, and so on. They fall under this group of insecta. Now, apart from insecta, we have what we call another class under arthropoda called the arachnids. Now, the arachnids includes, includes the ticks, the lice. We also have um, the scorpions and we have the spiders. They fall under the group called, atro sorry, called arachnids. They fall under the class called arachnids. And then we have the mariapodas. And the mariapodas, we have two main examples, which are the chilopodas. We have the um, centipede and then the millipede. So these all fall under the group called arthropoda. And then finally, which is the eighth um, phylum of invertebrates, we have the echinodermata. The echinodermata. Now, the echinodermata, an example is the starfish. We have the sea urchins, the sea cucumber, and so many other examples of um, the echinodermata. So we're going to be picking a few of these phylum or, and the examples in, in them, and then we're going to look at their reproductive process. Now, let's start with the first one, which is called hydra. Hydra. Now, I, I, hydra reproduces asexually, mostly by budding. It reproduces asexually by budding. Now, what is budding? I have said this, budding is a type of asexual reproduction in which a parent organism uh, uh, experiences an outgrowth, okay? There is an outgrowth in a parent organism, as you can see on the screen there, and that outgrowth is what we call um, a bud, and it continues to enlarge and increase in size, and it gets to the point where it detaches from the hydra. It detaches from the hydra, and once it detaches from the hydra, it can exist independently on its own. So it is also a process by which hydra gives rise to new individuals after its own kind. Okay, so that is reproduction in hydra. We also have reproduction, we can also observe reproduction in tapeworm, in tapeworm. Now tapeworms and some of the most of the worms, they are what we call hermaphrodites. Now a hermaphrodite is actually an organism or an animal that can actually carry out self-fertilization. Now, the reason why they can carry out self-fertilization is because of the presence of both the male and the female reproductive organ, which can also produce both male and female reproductive sex cells or gametes, all right? So that is what we refer, or that is what we refer actually to um, a hermaphrodite. Now, tapeworm reproduces sexually by fertilization, but I can add to it, I can say self fertilization because it has both the male and the female um, uh, um, reproductive uh, organs. Now, when a mature adult tapeworm self-fertilizes, the fertilized proglitid, there is this um, uh, 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 compartment, or will I put this segment, in a tapeworm. Now, each of those segments are referred to as a proglitid. And each of those proglitid have both male and female sex cells, which of which a, the fertilization can take place in the proglitid. Now, once the proglitid is fertilized or is fertilized, the proglitid falls off. Now, note that tapeworm is always within a host. A tapeworm cannot survive outside a host. So once it is growing inside, it, it is already inside a host. For it to carry out reproduction, it is already inside a host. And the primary host of a tapeworm is actually man. Man. Man is the primary host of tapeworm. So inside the intestine or the guts of man, okay, the fertilized proglitid falls off the body of the adult tapeworm. Now, once it falls off, when a man goes to um, defecate and urinate and every other thing to pass out waste, okay, not even actually waste, to pass out undigested food substances and all that. Now, if 
um, pigs and other animals go to graze or feed or drink from that infested um, uh, water or grass or wherever it is, the eggs enter into their intestines also. It gets or finds its way into the intestine. Okay? Now, once it gets in there, it starts developing. Now, it develops to a stage we call the bladder worm. It gets to the state where it calls, we call it the bladder worm. Now, it remains in that particular state until it enters another suitable host, which is man. Now, when these pigs, okay, are eating, mostly eating raw, when they are eating raw or undercooked, when they are eating and the bladder worm gains entrance into the man again, it develops again, starts feeding, and then develops into an adult tapeworm, and the cycle continues again. The cycle continues again. So this is how reproduction in tapeworm occurs. Please take note, tapeworm is a hermaphrodite and can carry out self-fertilization. Can carry out self-fertilization. Another, again, you can see it on the screen, you see the man, um, passing out proglitids, which contains the egg of, um, of the fertilized egg of a tapeworm. And when it is released on the grasses where these pigs go to feed from, they eat contaminated food, or the food is contaminated with the uh, fertilized proglitid. And then when it gets into them, they hatch and develop. And based on this development, they develop into the bladder worm stage. And then when undercooked meat is being eaten by man, these bladder worm gain entrance into um, the, the, the host of, uh, of the man and then starts developing, feeding and developing into an adult tapeworm. And then the cycle continues again. Next is reproduction in earthworm. Reproduction. In earthworm. Now, earthworm reproduces sexually by fertilization. Now, earthworm on its own is not a hermaphrodite. Earthworm is not a hermaphrodite. So it does not carry out self fertilization, it carries out only fertilization. Now, it, it simply means that it, it, it a mature earthworm, there is a male mature earthworm and there is also a female mature earthworm or a mature female earthworm. Now what happens is that both the male and the female mature earthworms come together and when they mate, the male releases its sex cell or gametes into the female. Now inside the female, these, uh, the male sex cell fuses based on the nucleus fuses with that of the female sex cell to form what we call a zygote, to form a zygote. Now, the female later lays this egg, which hatch into small earthworms, which later grows into adult earthworms, and then the cycle continues again. So that is reproduction in earthworm, reproduction in earthworm, as you can see earthworm carrying out reproduction. Next is reproduction in snails. Now remember I said that snails, they are mollusk. Now snails also reproduce sexually by fertilization. It simply means we can also have, and they are not hermaphrodites, so we have um, a male snail and then we also have a female snail. Now during reproduction, the male, the mature male snail meets with the mature female, uh, uh, female snail and then their sex cells or gametes are released. Mostly that of the male is actually released into that of the female. Now, fertilization is internal. Internal fertilization takes place. It simply means that the eggs that are inside of the female is fertilized by the male sex cell inside the body of the female, not outside. Now, there are several occasions, mostly in vertebrates, where we have what we call external fertilization. But please take note, reproduction, sexual reproduction by fertilization in snails 
it ha it on the, is by internal fertilization. Is by internal fertilization. And when this internal fertilization occurs, a zygote is what formed. Now, when the zygote is formed, the female lays the eggs in a cool and dry land. And after some days, the eggs hatch on their own and new um, baby snails emerge from the hatching. Okay? So that is how reproduction in snails occur. That's how reproduction in snails occur. All right. Now, let's take a look at reproduction in cockroach. Now, please take note that a cockroach is an arthropod. And as an arthropod, it falls under the class insecta. It falls under the class insecta. Now, cockroach undergoes sexual reproduction by fertilization. They undergo uh, um, sexual reproduction by fertilization. And um, it simply means that a cockroach has a male cockroach, and then we have also female cockroaches. And then uh, what happens is that during reproduction in cockroach, a mature adult male cockroach meets with a, um, a, a mature adult female cockroach. The ad uh, mature adult male cockroach introduces its gametes or sex cell into the body of the female. Now, once it is done, these sex cells does not, do not um, immediately fuse with that of the egg. No, it is stored temporarily in the body of the female in a place we call the sperm pouch. Stored there, and after some time, they are later released to meet with that of the female sex cell, or to meet with the female sex cell as to fertilize it. Now, the eggs that, when, uh, when fertilization takes, takes place, has taken place, um, a zygote is formed in the form of an egg. Now, these eggs are being released or laid by the mature um, adult female, by the mature adult female, uh, in, in, in what we call honey egg cases, okay? Now, in the eggs inside of these honey egg cases develops, start developing, and they develop into a nymph, and then from a nymph, they also develop into an adult cockroach, develop into an adult cockroach. As you can see, we have two, a male and a female um, cockroach there, and see the case, the honey egg case there. Inside of the honey egg case, we have a lot of eggs of the cockroach. Now, the next one, which is probably the last, is reproduction in starfish. Reproduction in starfish. Now, starfish is an echinodermata. I've given you some other examples of starfish. We have the star sea urchins. We have the sea cucumber. They all fall under echinodermata. Now, starfish undergo sexual reproduction by fertilization and they also undergo a sexual reproduction by fragmentation, by fragmentation. Now, frag this fragmentation can also be called regeneration, regeneration. But however, the mode of reproduction of, of starfish depends on the species, and also it depends on the environment it finds itself. Most times, you see some starfish undergo fragmentation or regeneration. Now, what is fragmentation? Remember I told you that fragmentation is a process in which a part of an organism is caught, and that part that is caught develops into a new individual itself. Now, you can see the starfish. Here, you have a full parent starfish, and then here the parent starfish is caught. You can see it's caught into two parts. Now, one part begins to develop into a new starfish, and the other part develops also the other part that is, the part that is cut off begins to regenerate, and the other part that is cut off begins to regenerate. And so at the long run, what we have, instead of one starfish, what we obtain is two starfish. So starfish undergoes a sexual reproduction by binary fission. Now, this brings us to the end of this class. But before we go, let's take a look at some questions that relates to what we have just discussed in um, reproduction in um, invertebrates. Now, let's take a few questions, very few of them. Which of the following groups of 
arthropods has no antenna. Now, if you visit some of our videos, you will discover when I, you, will, you, will, you will actually be able to answer this particular question. And I think that is in Kingdom Animalia. We made mention of some of the characteristics of um, the classes of arthropods, which include crustaceans, which include arachnids. We have also the insectors and then the mariapodas. Now, which one has no antenna? No antenna. No antenna. The one that does not have any antenna here is the arachnids. The arachnids. So we have the next one. The group mollusk. Mollusca is characterized by the presence of, the correct answer is soft and non-segmented bodies. Soft, non-segmented bodies. So that is what we call mollusca. That's one of their characteristics. And then also, which of the following distinguishes a butterfly from a moth? We didn't discuss on that. Now, the cheating in the um, exoskeleton of many arthropods is strengthened by, it is strengthened by, we can say it is, um, the correct answer is a calcium compound, strengthened by a calcium compound. Thank you for participating in today's class. You can practice more questions using your exam guide app. The app scores and gives a detailed explanation of all the questions at the end of your practice test. You can also learn particular topics of interest with different modes, like study mode, uh, mock mode, and even practice mode. It, is also, it also has other features that makes learning very fun. Now, it is a must for all serious students. Download from www.examguide.com if you don't have it yet. See you in the next class. Don't forget to subscribe to our channels hit the notifica notification bell and share the videos to your loved ones and friends that will benefit from it. Bye for now.